This is RBN, the Republic Broadcasting Network. Oh, okay. You know, Texas is in trouble. The United States is in trouble. The Constitution is not followed. It's just a piece of paper. At least that's what the, you know, the presidentes of the corporate United States of America would actually have you believe you're listening to the Republic of Texas radio show. I'm your host, Steve O'Brien. And, oh, man, we're going a couple different places this way, uh, well, today, and we'll be joined by Issa Hodges. Um, he's actually a rather remarkable person. At least uh, Issa will be joining us for the first hour, and we'll see if he feels like uh, joining us for the second hour. We'll see how that goes. But um, after last week and uh, during this week, I got a lot of people talking to me about, well, hmm, how do you say it? Republics and uh, single-minded spiritual beliefs. You know, where we go, we need to restore the republic because my spiritual belief is better than their spiritual beliefs. And, you know, they go everywhere. Well, Issa Hodges, he's a broadcaster, and he'll be joining us. And I'm not going to get too much into that because we're going to be bringing him on in about 15 minutes. But he's a Muslim. He lives here in America. He supports the Constitution. Uh, too bad the Constitution isn't followed in America. I'm working to try to restore a Constitution to Texas. Because I see the United States of America as a lost cause. You know, another buddy of mine is out there on the interwebs. His name is um, Rick Reinerson. He just posted an interesting, interesting article at pickyourbattles.net. And, well... How do we actually go into this? Yeah. General Wesley Clark said that we should look into intern, or, uh, what's it called? Internment camps for people that exercise their free speech and are not loyal to the government of the United States. Oh man, really? Because, um, I thought it was constitutional to speak up against your government. Oh, right. We don't do that constitution thing. I get it. Maybe we should throw us all into camps. Hey, look, got my hand up. Where's my seat in the camp? Or maybe they're just going to make me stand around like they did to all the German soldiers after World War II. No bunks, no seats, just a big fence. Just stand there, man. I don't know. Maybe we won't do that this time. But maybe we will because they don't like free speech and when I sit here and tell you that the United States, the corporate United States, doesn't follow the Constitution, I'd like you to point out where they do. They might interpret it and play little games, but in, in actuality, the world around us, the government we live in, looks more like a what is it, a game show that's produced in Hollywood? We've got this person, El Presidente of, you know, Barack Obama. Woo! He's going to a prison. And he's going to point at people and say, we got to release these four people because what? Dude, really? That's a game show. Our laws are screwed up. Everything's screwed up in the United States. I don't even know where to start. Mike in Minnesota has called in two times, you know, in the last two shows, and man, I totally get you. Education system is a mess, right? And they don't vet the teachers. It really doesn't take much to be a teacher. I remember when I was back in California, people would sit there and you couldn't find any other jobs, so what do you do? Well, go take a test and become a teacher. It doesn't take much. All it takes is, a little, you know, any kind of college degree and pass a little test. And, hey, look, you're a teacher. Yay. And all the students look up to you. Do you have any ethics? Do you have any honor? Ah, that's not required. That's not required at all. But when I look at um, Texas, you know, and I have to look at Texas because I see that the United States of America is just such a big battle, and I get it. I want the United States to become a republic again, to follow the Constitution, to leave the statutory law system, and to kind of like pass that by and go, okay, we tried that. It got to be too big 
too bad. Uh, and we threw too many of our brothers and sisters and friends in jail. That doesn't work. I want that to happen. I guess you can say that I'm just in a fallback position. I'm falling back to Texas. When I was originally talking to John Statmiller about uh, uh, bringing the show to RBN, I told him about, you know, how I felt that a good fallback position was Texas. John Statmiller said, well, you know what? Um, I don't really support that position. And I'm good with that. I'm totally good with that. But I want to make this case to not necessarily John, right? I don't want to change any of your opinions. I want to show you where my opinions are. But one of the reasons John Statmiller said that he didn't necessarily support a free and independent Texas was because we'd be sitting here in this little chunk of land and we'd have, well, question mark, enemies? Well, on all borders, the United States of America would be there to the, the uh, north, and they'd be to the east, and they'd be to the west and to the south. We have Mexico, and it's like, man. And I told him, well, I don't know what I'd say to that. Well, actually, it took me a couple of days till I thought about, you know, exactly how I'd approach that. And what I, the way I'd see it is we have them all over the place right now. We have them with clipboards, and they're coming at us from every angle. There aren't clearly defined boundaries between the hostels and yourself. Now, when I say hostels, they're not necessarily the hostels that you'd have if you had, like, a little country and everybody around you is trying to attack you and do stuff like this. These are kind of passive-aggressive hostels. And in Fredericksburg, Texas, and Glispie County, we're under attack at this present moment, and nobody even knows it. We have tax assessors that have jacked the um, property rates, or, well, the properties have gone up, and they're raising everybody's taxes. And you know what? That's an attack, man. Here in Gillespie County, Fredericksburg in specific, uh, we have a big tourist thing, right? 2008 came and then, whoa, all these tourists came, right? And they're just like flowing into here like a fish going down a river and they're buying wine and they're building wineries. You can't go a week without, well, they call them wineries and really they're just booze shops. They sell bottles and so forth. We make fun of them all the time. You know, there's about enough grapes here to grow, well, I don't know. They can probably build eh, two or three bottles of wine a, a year or something like that. But we don't grow grapes. Allegedly, we make wine and whatever. But the property and the tourists just keep coming. Well, they're coming after, well, the TSA came into power in all of its glory and people stopped flying. And then now they start driving to Fredericksburg and they don't know why. And they just come here. They flock in here. Uh, they decide to build uh, little vacation houses. And so they build a vacation house. You know, they, uh, you buy something for some measly $200,000, tear it all apart and invest a million dollars in it. All of a sudden you have a million dollar house. Property taxes on everybody goes up. I've been, I've been seeing different people having their, um, their property tax, and we're not supposed to have property taxes here in, in Texas, but, you know, hey, we don't follow the rules, remember? This is occupied United States of America. There are no rules. You know, it's just what they can point to and say, hey, we're, we're going to do that. So the attack in this world where John Statmiller outlined, you know, here's Texas and we have, you know, an enemy to the north and an enemy, and I'm just going to qualify the word enemy, non-Texas people, let's just do that, to the north, to the south, what are they going to do, want to break in here and take our power, take our food, maybe, I don't know, the economic collapse may be coming really soon, you know, I hear that all the time, all I want to do is restore a constitution get free, explore, well, the possibility of freedom and, you know, yeah, is that a lofty goal? I don't know. So, yeah, so the guy with the clipboard, this guy that comes over to you, that sits in his office, that sits in his cubicle, whatever, he says, oh, look, your house just went up in value. So, in order to reward you for that, here's an extra $1,000 a year. You have to pay it.
Some of the business owners are, well, they're getting even more screwed. You know, I heard one had a property rate increase of $13,000. Now, how does that affect the bottom line? The property owner has to pass that on to the renter, and the renter is already selling his products at some obscene price, and that's everything here is obscene, folks. Gillespie County, Fredericksburg, one of the key things here is if it's not selling, raise the price, then it goes. Right, because it's all tourists. It's all tourists. But it's hard to live in this world. Well, it's hard to live in Disneyland when you can buy cotton candy for what five dollars, and you go, man, really want a steak. Ah, uh, we don't do steak. This is Disneyland. So, so yeah, the property owner he uh, what takes the hit? Yeah, no, he passes that on to the business owner, the guy that's leasing the business from him, and that person, well, he passes it on to the consumer, and that person passes it. Well, that person might just pass on it. Uh, yeah, well, the employee, right? He gets a raise because the property taxes. No, he doesn't get a raise. He gets the shaft. Well, and he might get no job, but that's okay because in the corporate United States, we have food stamps. Yes, wonderful. They're not called food stamps anymore. I believe it's an electronic card that has your balance, and you get all the food you want, and you can live at somebody's house, and, well, I don't know you to get all the food you want. But it doesn't deal with this this whole thing. So we're under attack, right? There's no personal responsibility. There are administrators, the minions of the tops down government that's coming down on you. Oh, I don't know. Maybe I'm just too frustrated. Maybe it is good that everybody gets taxed to death. I feel that um, it would be a better better place if we were to just um, well stop it. But how do you stop it? It's kind of hard. It's kind of really hard when, okay, hmm, how do I go there? Yeah, on Friday, on, uh, well, here on Republic Broadcasting, you may, may have listened to the National Intel Report on, on Friday. Now, God, who is the host? Hmm. Okay, I forget, but Jamie of, uh, uh, what's it called? Freedom TV, not Freedom, Freeman, the Freeman's perspective. She was on talking about Operation Monarch and MKUltra. Now, MKUltra was a program that they had in the 1970s where they were doing all this CIA mind control stuff. And okay, I get it. You know, they allegedly stopped. But Monarch got, is bigger than that. It's kind of sewn into the corporate media and it, it, programs our culture it tells us what to think right in indirectly it doesn't just go hey you should think this one of the reasons i brought i'm bringing isa hodges on is because well he's going after that attack vector now there's a vector of um i hate you that's coming from the the corporate media and that's being waged against the whole muslim community right people will walk around and they'll tell you hey you know isis is well no al qaeda oh dang muslims really is that true because last time i remember when i lived in california the muslims that i actually worked with were good and honorable people and they weren't violent that was crazy and it, it, well that whole reality didn't quite exist sure the al Qaeda, you know, meme that's being carried by, let's say, Fox News and all the other folks that existed for a long time. But, you know, the drum beats harder, the hate, the fear mongering from, you know, corporate media, mass media, whatever you want to call them mainstream. I call them liars. That's really more to the truth. Well, Isa Hodges, you know, he's, <laughs> he's my kind of guy. He's an activist. He's sitting there working for the rights of, well, people like you and me, Americans, Texan, everything. He's not willing to sit down. You know, we organized a, let's see, what was it, in 2011? No, it was 2013. He organized a, a Million America March, right, in Washington, D.C. He's been on Fox News. He's, he's messed around, talked to the useless ones like Sean Hannity and Jeannie 
Petro? I don't know who the heck that chick is. You know, he's been quoted on a lot of stuff. He has a radio program. You can actually hear his program at wakeupinamerica.com. I've been on a network with him, and I wow, I learned a lot the the times I was able to actually um, listen to him because it's hard to listen to everybody, but it's so important that we do. I'm going to bring him on in a, in a few minutes, but his show is very important because it goes against the fear, it goes against the lie, and it goes against the polarity. And I hope that you you guys will enjoy this one. I know that everybody's spiritual, religious beliefs are different. And I get that, and there's a lot of hate out there for for different groups. But again, uh, Isa, uh, his show is uh, a Muslim and a Catholic wake up in America, and he's usually joined with Cal, who's a Catholic, and you know they well they go all over the place. Let's see if we have him on the line. Hey, Isa, are you there? I sure am, Steve. How are you? Oh man, I I think I'm wound up. I'm not too sure. It's a little early. <laughs> You got a rant going really early this morning. <laughs> Man, I, I thought I was going to be putting people to sleep, but I guess my chaos <laughs> isn't doing that. No, uh -huh. no, it's not. Uh, can I can, can I correct you on a, just a couple of things there? Oh, um, correct me on all things, man. No, just a couple of things. Uh, one is Hodge. There's no S at the end of my name. Um, Oops. Yeah, that's okay. And the other thing is, um, unfortunately, we no longer live in America. We live in America. And that's actually the name of the website. Wake up in Merica. M E R I C A. Oh my and god, uh, I see that now. That's yeah, crazy. Yeah. I know. Everybody's used to when they read it real fast because we're used to seeing America. But unfortunately, we no longer live in America. We live in Merica. Because mm. uh, as you were saying uh, earlier, our constitution has been raped, plundered and pillaged uh by the uh corporates um, you know, of this country. And, and, and that's the problem. Uh, but it's a global we, we, problem too, right? You know, oh, it's, it's, almost bigger, definitely. it's huge. It, it, it seems, wow. Oh, yeah. The, the Rothschild banks are, are, I mean, if you look at every country that gets toppled, uh, and what do you want to call them? A dictator or, uh, a, a, a duly elected official from <laughs> Egypt to Libya to Afghanistan to Iraq. The very first thing that goes in before they even get a constitution of their own. Central bank. I got you. You yep, know where you're they, going. They, yep. They, they, they sure do. They get the Rothschild banking system is the first thing that they get when they go in there. So if people have any doubts that, um, that this is, you know, that what's going on in the world is the problem of corporations, just look at what happens when there's a regime change in a country. Um, and what wasn't there before and what the first thing that gets put in you know, once the regime changes. You know, I remember Egypt when it fell and, well, allegedly rose again a few years ago and how that was going on and all of a sudden they got all that chaos in Egypt and then the rebels got a central bank and I'm like going, yep. really? Okay, yep. got it, being funded. And, yep. you know, Fox News went out there, man. I don't know if you saw this clip. Fox News went out there and they're sitting there interviewing people and they're all, um, what do you think? Is you going to have a dem democratic uh, uh, country soon, and he goes. I do not want a democracy. I want a republic. <laughs> <laughs> they heard it. Cut. The, they heard it. Cut away on that one. <laughs> yeah, you know. I think I only heard that once, but it's. I just actually got. You know, I actually got. I had Jill Stein, uh, Doctor Jill Stein. You know, she's running for president uh, for the Green Party. On, uh, she was on my show Tuesday, and uh, I actually I, I quizzed her. You know, because I want to know. Uh, you know, you say you're for the people. Let's find out. So I quizzed her and asked her, uh, are we supposed to be living in a democracy or a constitutional republic? Mm -hmm. To my surprise, she knew the answer. Really? She but said she... constitutional republic. <laughs> Does she think we follow the constitution? Absolutely not. She thinks that it's been um, gutted and and sold uh, you know, to the highest bidder. Actually, I was very impressed with her um, uh, with the interview with her, I was very, I mean, yes, she, she, she happens to be a bit liberal on things, but, you know, there lies, uh, uh, the beauty of living in, uh, what we're supposed to be living in America is that you can have all ideologies, you know, all religions, and, well, uh, as long as one liberty does not infringe upon another liberty, uh, then we should be living in peace. 
Right, for sure. You know, like, my view of a constitutional republic is a bottoms-up government, right? Very limited on top, and then mm-hmm. us as people groups can decide our laws and so forth and how we want to deal with stuff as long as it doesn't infringe upon the Constitution and things that are granted. But that doesn't seem to work. And while I explore returning uh, Texas to a constitutional republic, we deal with a lot of these conversations, right? They, You go with, okay, the government's just going to be, oh, that's the music. Hang on. We'll be right back. This is a quick one, about three minutes. HempUSA.org has a revolutionary wonder food for detoxing the body and rebuilding the immune system. Micro plant powder can help unclog arteries and soften heart valves while removing heavy metals, virus, fungus, bacteria, and parasites. Plus, it cleans and purifies the blood, lungs, stomach, and colon. Keep your body clean with micro plant powder. Order today at 888-910-4367 or visit HempUSA.org. Come to Finca Bayano, a small community in Panama, which is being established for people who believe that a future crisis may be difficult to survive in North America after a collapse of the system. Go to bugoutpanama.com for more information. There is limited space for 100 people only. Go to bugoutpanama.com to immigrate as long as you can. Prepare. Don't despair at bugoutpanama.com. Dr. Joel Wallach, author of the famous health lecture, Dead Doctors Don't Lie, presents his newest book, Epigenetics. Epigenetics is required reading for the very survival of Americans, and yes, all of humanity. Modern man has bet on the wrong horse to save them from disease and pestilence. The medical system has failed us fearfully. Join the health revolution. Buy Epigenetics today and receive a free membership to purchase all the products that Dr. Joel Wallach formulated at wholesale prices and receive a free CD of Dead Doctors Don't Lie. All this for only $25 plus shipping and handling. Call 888-311-4311. That's 888-311-4311. Again, that's just $25 plus shipping and handling. And you'll receive the new book, Epigenetics, a free membership and a free CD of Dead Doctors Don't Lie. Call 888-311-4311. That's 888-311-4311. Corporate media dominates the American opinion. Finding independent voices that counter this avalanche is becoming increasingly difficult. With the endless corruption running rampant throughout our government, independent voices are needed more than ever to battle the offensive against our freedoms and liberties. As a listener of RBN, no one understands this concept better than you. Now it's up to you to do your part. The time has come for you to take action and begin broadcasting the truth to hundreds or thousands of people every month. Sound impossible? Quite the contrary. With pointed slogans from LibertyStickers.com, you can reach countless sleeping Americans unaware that they live in a real-life wonderland. LibertyStickers.com has a huge inventory of political bumper stickers and messages that reflect the truth about our government, our politicians, and the future of America. With so many in stock, there's one perfect for you. Visit us today at LibertyStickers.com. Again, that's LibertyStickers.com. Do your part. Your voice is important. Let it be heard. Well, we're back. You're listening to the Republic of Texas Radio. I'm Steve O'Brien, and I've been joined by, um, well, Isa Hoge. I hope I got that right, man. He's the host <laughs> of... Uh, did I do it again? Man. He did. He, 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 I know. It's The problem is here in English, I make, you know, makes a, an I sound, but everywhere else in the world, it makes an E sound. So it's Isa. Mm. And then well, Hodge, like Dodge. I'll tell you one thing, Isa. I am consistent at screwing things up. Oh, yeah. You know, and that just happens. It's that, that's, of, the, that's the California in you. Yeah, probably so. <laughs> we destroy the world. At least that's what people tell me. You know. So before we went to break, and we only have a short segment here, but um, a discussion about how a republic would actually operate and be tolerant to different 
views, right? Okay, uh, Frankie and I, Frankie Nieto, you know, we were mm-hmm. heading over to a, um, a congressional meeting, uh, a couple years ago, and we were in a car with a bunch of different people, the Chief Justice of the Republic of Texas, Ray Cannon, and so I asked Ray Cannon this question. Okay, so we get Texas back, right? And we have all these counties, right? And what mm-hmm. happens if there's a, a Muslim county? Is that constitutional? Now, I, I do believe that, you know, you should always know the answer before you ask the question. And so I wanted right. to see how he, he, he said, he reacted, right? Because he's a Christian man and he, he talks about Jesus and things like that. And that's great. Love that too. Um, and of course, what's the answer, Isa? You know the answer. Is that okay well, in a constitutional republic? Well, let, well, let's, let's go back to the, the creators of the constitutional republic. Let's go back to the founding fathers. Um, okay. this, this idea of, of not just Muslims, but Catholics and Jews living in America. So you have to understand at that time, there was just Protestants or deists, which is what the majority of our, our founding fathers were, were deists, actually. And then you had Native Americans, which to them were, were heathens. And then you also had the slaves, which of course they were heathens as well. So you had us versus them even back then. Mm-hmm. Um, you had this us versus them as far as the religion is concerned. So some of the most heated debates amongst the founding fathers were the fact that they envisioned a future in America where there were Catholics, Jews, and Muslims living here. And so they actually did debate this and concluded at the end of it that yes in fact that the laws under the constitution the law of the land would adhere to those non-protestants as well i mean let's not forget the very one of the first pieces of legislation after we formed a government in november of 1776 called the treaty of tripoli and especially if we read article 11 it's it's very telling of the mentality of our founding fathers to Muslims in particular because this Treaty of Tripoli was a peace agreement between the then newly formed United States and what they called back then they called the Mohammedan nations which we call Islamic countries now or Arab nations now and and it says as in such the United States is not founded on the Christian religion that there shall not come to pass any Anything that shall disrupt the peace between our two nations. So the very first sentence declares that this is not a Christian nation. Let's not forget that there's a lot of debates. There are a lot of letters written, particularly from Thomas Jefferson, how there's a division between church and state. That church is a personal thing. Mm -hmm. It's an individual thing. It's what you do within your own home, within your own community. People get so hung up on divided. It's just like not too long ago. You know, everybody was up in arms about the flag, and everybody's up in arms about the homosexual Supreme Court order. You know, so I, you know, I, I kind of jokingly but seriously said, while the country was so busy fighting over fags and flags, mm-hmm. did anybody pay attention to what got snuck behind us? The fast TPP. track of the TPP. Yeah, there you go. Exactly. Exactly. So while everybody's out there hating, so busy hating my faith. I don't care if you don't like my faith. Good for you. That's your opinion. It's your God-given right. And I do mean God-given, not American-given. The free will to choose is given to you by God. Just right. as our rights are given to us is not by a piece of paper. It's not by a man. A piece of paper just puts down in writing what God has already given us. My God, I'm so glad you're so angry at the state of our world. That's really nice. It gives me a good smile because I feel the same way. You know, when I watch that whole thing going down, like what you say, fags and flags, um, true, TPP snuck through. I get, uh, what, Hillary bushed? I get attacked by these people, and it doesn't even matter with the TPP going through. We're doomed. Wow. Okay, so this was a short segment. We're going to do some commercials. We have a longer segment coming up. Hang on, folks. We'll be right back. You are tuned in to the Republic Broadcasting Network. Visit our website by going to republicbroadcasting.org.
Recent events have shown just how vulnerable we are to deadly viruses, bacteria, and fungus. These diseases are all caused by infectious pathogens that often get the upper hand on conventional medical treatments. Now more than ever, there's a great need for a product that will help protect us. Look no further. Supernatural Silver can provide immune system support to help fight off these deadly pathogens. Supernatural Silver is a new and vastly improved type of silver solution that's safe and extremely effective against 143 types of bacteria, both forms of viruses, mold, and yeast. Supernatural Silver can be taken orally or used topically and can be used in a nebulizer or vaporizer for inhalation. With over 180 scientific studies by independent universities, hospitals, and research institutions, Supernatural Silver is a powerful weapon against disease. Go to SupernaturalSilver.com and use the promo code SILVER2014 for 20% off your entire order. Give you and your loved ones a fighting chance with Supernatural Silver. There are many water filters to choose from, but there is only one system that is consistently customer rated five stars as the number one system for effective filtration of fluoride, radiation, drug residues, heavy metals, a wide range of radioisotopes, and more. Introducing the Pure Effect Ultra, the next generation water filter that also raises alkaline pH, improves antioxidant potential, and has advanced anti-radiation technology, all while using no electricity. Sold worldwide, it provides virtually instant clean water on demand. It is not made in China, and the shipping is free to all 50 states. Buy your Pure Effect Ultra today by visiting pureeffectfilters.com. Or call 888-891-4821. Again, that's 888-891-4821. Or visit pureeffectfilters.com. Extend your life with extend device. When I had a heart attack at 42, I was not sure what the future held. But a year later, the doctors could find nothing wrong with me and took me off all my medication. What did I do? I took a herbal mixture of garlic, cayenne, and a few other herbs mixed in liquid form. I now call this Extendovite. I would have never believed that a few simple herbs could actually change my life like they did. Now it's your turn to see what the powers of garlic and cayenne can do for you. For only $69.95 plus shipping and handling for a two-month supply of either capsules or liquid, you too can begin on your path to better health. For more information, call 1-877-928-8822. That's 1-877-928-8822. Or visit our website at heartdrop.com. Extend your life with Extend Dr. Joel Wallach, author of the famous health lecture, Dead Doctors Don't Lie, presents his newest book, Epigenetics. Epigenetics is required reading for the very survival of Americans, and yes, all of humanity. Modern man has bet on the wrong horse to save them from disease and pestilence. The medical system has failed us fearfully. Join the health revolution. Buy Epigenetics today and receive a free membership to purchase all the products that Dr. Joel Wallach formulated at wholesale prices and receive a free CD of Dead Doctors Don't Lie. All this for only $25 plus shipping and handling. Call 888-311-4311. That's 888-311-4311. Again, that's just $25 plus shipping and handling. And you'll receive the new book, Epigenetics, a free membership and a free CD of Dead Doctors Don't Lie. Call 888-311-4311. That's 888-311-4311. You're listening to the Republic of Texas Radio for July 19th, and I have a warning for you all out there real quick. While you've been staring at your various rectangles, watching movies, checking Facebook, and so forth, the Trans-Pacific Partnership has gone through at least the fast trackability of this secret document that you may get to read in about four or five years, and it's going to screw us all. Anyways, I'm joined by Issa Hodge. Did I get that right, Issa? Hodge. It's like Dodge. Dang. By the end of this show... Hodge, you Hodge. will get it right. You I will. will right. I will. Yes. I yes. do learn. Okay, good. <laughs> I got some notes. And we were talking a little bit about that. Hey, 
Okay, so there's a lot of hate going on, right? You know, they're they're trying to polarize stuff on our our rectangles. You know, the TV, it's going to sit there, and you know, Fox and all those guys, they they go, yeah. "Hey, look, Jihad Johnny is going to cut off somebody's head or something like that." Oh, where's yeah. the, where's the truth in that? What should we be talking about, and what shouldn't be be talking about? Because they're like Jihad, 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 or something like that. Where where do we find peace? Do you know? Well, I mean. I mean, when people actually start thinking for themselves uh, and actually raise their hand and start asking questions, I think we'll start finding peace. And 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 here's the here's the ironic thing: people say to me, "Alisa, why 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 how do you not give up?" I mean, isn't it frustrating? It's like you know, it's like every time you probably feel like you take you know two you know ten you know two steps forward, you know, some idiot comes out of the woodwork and knocks you ten steps back and. More and more people hate you, and you know it's all over the news all the time, and we're bombing all over what thirteen different Islamic countries, and you know how can you stay a Muslim, or you know how, you know how can you continue to fight for everybody's rights? And I tell them this: I say it's not as detrimental as you think it is. Okay, uh, this the, this divide and conquer tactic that they're doing seems big simply because it's only these isolated incidences of division that the media pumps out there. They don't show the number of times that you have interfaith uh, uh, works within this within this country. You know, within my community, for example, right. we have interfaith youth sports. We have interfaith neighborhood watches. You know, we have interfaith uh, lunches and picnics and barbecues. And, you know, this is between Christian churches and Islamic churches. And this is happening all over the country. The news doesn't put this out there. people don't like that word interfaith, right? They're oh, God, really, no. God, no. They don't yeah, like yeah, it. yeah. They don't like it. But see, it's it, just as every faith has its percentage of extremists that interpret um, the the teachings and the, and the words of the of that religion uh, in order to suit their political their political aspirations, their financial aspirations, their power aspirations. We also have in this country, well, particularly in the Western world, and actually, I've been to Muslim countries. And unfortunately, it's even there as well. You have within those governments, which is a minority, that continue to have power and hold power when they per- put out just the negative that happens to be going on between the interfaith. And here's my point. 9-11 happened. And this was tragic for all Americans. One thing that media doesn't put out there is that there were Muslims in those towers as well. And the other thing that the media doesn't put out there is that there were Muslims like me, who was there at ground zero, who were digging through the rubble, looking for any life. Do you think I just dug through that rubble looking for Muslims only? Oh, you're a Jew? I'm sorry, you have to stand underneath that rock there? Oh, I'm sorry, you're Christian, you're not my faith, I'm sorry you're burning, but that's okay. Somebody will come along and help you soon. I'm only looking for Muslims here. And it didn't matter. Mm-hmm. You were looking for people, period. Same thing in Katrina. The amount of money that, 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 that seven to ten million, they don't quite know how many Muslims there are in this country anymore, but seven to ten million of us in this country, we're a nine billion dollar industry a year. We, we make nine billion dollars a year. Per capita, Muslims in this country are the highest educated, the highest income bracket, and the most law abiding. Even amongst these unconstitutional victimless crimes that cities and states continue to make in order to profit. Okay? We still follow more of those rules than any other group. So, but do we have extremists in this group? Yes, we have extremists within us that, that, that cherry pick the Quran just like uh, 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 your, your, your pen right, gallery. Right, right. Oh, I know. Stuff. I like to call it twisted scripture, right? You, oh, you yeah. make yeah. an opinion and then you find verses to, you know, um, yeah, that stuff totally exists. Um, okay. So, well, God, I want to go two different directions and I'm going to go this one. You defined the word jihad on a previous show of yours, yeah. right? And it, yeah. it wasn't this holy war. Well, I guess they've redefined the um, the language or uh, the word here in America to mean something else. But it meant struggle. Tell me about that word. Right. Well, you have actually um, three forms, not three definitions, people, but three forms uh, of jihad, Okay. So you have the one that they like to interpret, okay, as uh, as war, okay. But the first one, which is the most important one, which is the largest one, is is called jihad and nafs, which is jihad against oneself, okay. That means that you're constantly internal struggle 
to not commit sins, to not look at nudity or to not drink alcohol or to not, you know, commit sins, do things that are, are wrong. All right. And it's also a jihad within self, a struggle within self to do right as well. Oh, I only got a hundred bucks in my account, but I need to do my charity. You know, um, yeah, I know God tells us that for every penny we give out, he's going to give us tenfold back. So there's a struggle to say, you know what? I'm going to trust that God's going to give this back to me and I'm going to go ahead and give my charity that I'm supposed to give. And so you give that charity. All right. Yeah. The second type is called uh, jihad as shaitan. Okay. Which is a jihad against the Satan, which is jihad against the devil. All right, who is a constant temptress, the constant whisperer to us. Okay. okay. All right. Then you have your final kind, which is uh, which is your jihad against oppression. Now this is where they call it's the jihad on war. Okay, it's the monophican, the jihad okay. against the monophican. Okay, um, and the mon- monophican is those that oppress people because our prophet the final prophet Muhammad peace and blessings of God be upon him said if you see an injustice you must first try to stop it with your hands if you cannot stop it with your hands you must try to stop it with your mouth if you cannot stop it with your mouth you must condemn it in your heart but that's the weakest of faith now notice there in that it doesn't say if you see an injustice against Muslims it says if you see an injustice period we are con- we are we are commanded to stop it with our hands that means physical. If we have to stop, uh, walk by and some man is getting beaten by four people, we're commanded to go in there and help him. Same here in America. We see this, uh, this boot of oppression that continues to get pushed deeper and deeper into the back of the necks of American citizens. And so a lot of people don't understand that we as Muslims are also commanded that when we live in a non-Islamic country, that we're commanded to be the best of citizens. That we're commanded to help that society be better. And that we're commanded to even be patriotic to that country, particularly when that country gives us rights that are Islamic. Hmm. Which this country yeah. does. Yeah, that all makes pretty much sense to me. You know, I even got more clarity this time <laughs> than I heard you talk about it. <laughs> one of the one of the funniest things okay, so there's this story that I like to go back to in England. Um, this guy's driving across the a bridge, right? And there's a very steep angled, you know, sides, and he sees this little girl, right? And this little girl is walking across the bridge. Now he sees this little child, mm-hmm. and um, this child is trying to, well, she's in danger, and he knows it. Well, at the time, and probably even right now, if you're a male and there's a little tiny kid and you go over there, it, there's a fear that goes, if I help that child, um, I'm going to get in trouble. They'll call me a pedophile. They'll call me this. They'll call me that and so forth. And so he went ahead, and in this particular case, and this is back in the 90s, mm-hmm. he got on the phone and he called 911 or the equivalent of that in in England and they came out and they dragged the little kid's body out of the um out of the river right because he failed to actually take action with his hands you know he didn't get out now um in the Bible, the Christian Bible, Jesus teaches, or I guess there's this little passage where, you know, I believe it's John. John goes and say, uh, says, well, I'll die for you, Jesus. And, and Jesus goes, yeah, you'll die for me, but we, will you live for me? Mm-hmm. See, I like to, to look at that thing, and it felt like it, it connected to me because this guy, he was sitting there, and he might have died for that child, and he might have taken a bullet for that child, but he wasn't willing to live for that child. And, you know, the ethics of people... People is kind of strange where, you know, I mean, it's very easy to say that I'll step in front of a, um, a bullet, right? And then the second thing would be to actually do it. And I'm sorry, this cat's crawling all over me right now. Um, and I don't know if I'm making sense, but, but I understand where you're going with that. You know, the first thing, we do have to address these things. That probably explains why you talk. And why you're trying to communicate so hard is your beliefs, right? Well, it's not just my beliefs, but the fact is that I do love my country. I was born here. My parents were, well, my parents weren't actually born here. My mother was actually born in England, but, uh, you know, but I mean, my, my family roots are here in America. They don't go as far back as maybe some of, uh, a lot of your listeners, but this is my country. You know, I was born here in this country. And, um, 
And, and, and I love the Constitution. In fact, I say something that gets me in trouble a lot of times, but I, 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 I say it because it's the truth. Uh, I have been asked before, uh, why don't you go to an Islamic country? You know, if you, if, you know, if you don't like the things here. Mm-hmm. Well, first off, it's my constitutional right if I don't like something to say something and try to change something here. That's number one. But number two, I mean, I am living in an Islamic country. And, they, and most people say, oh, see, he's trying to put the Sharia in the Constitution. No, 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 no. Um, I hate to tell you guys, but the Sharia is already in the Constitution because Sharia guarantees us the right to freedom of speech, guarantees us the right of freedom of press, guarantees us the right. All the things that we read in the Constitution is in the Sharia law. So I'm quite happy living in this country because I already get all the rights by the Constitution that is also guaranteed to me by God and my faith. Hmm. So this is the closest thing to an Islamic country in the entire world. And I have been to a lot of Islamic countries. So this is the closest thing to it. Now, does that mean that this is an Islamic country? No, but that's how I, I myself personally attach myself physically because I am born here and this is my country, but then also how I kind of spiritually attach myself. Not to say that this is an Islamic country for you or or, or anybody else, but it's no different, I guess, than when somebody says that this is a Christian country because the same things that are written in the Constitution you'll find in the Bible as well. And then that's how you make your spiritual connection to the country. And that I agree with. You do find the same laws in the Constitution. There are also the same laws that are within the Bible. So Sharia law isn't about cutting off people's heads. Well, it's about capital punishment, no different than we have here. Yeah, there's capital punishment, but the the point of the capital punishment side, Sharia spreads a gambit of things. Everything from how I interact with my parents, how I interact with non-Muslims, how I interact with my wife, how I eat, how I walk into a house. Um, Sharia covers everything from my character to my demeanor, to my behaviors, to even capital punishment for crimes. And the purpose of it's no different than what we give ourselves excuses here. Look in Texas, the great state of Texas, the capital, <laughs> the capital crime, capital of the world, if you would, uh, uh, where more people are put to death in that state than all the states combined every year. Freedom. Okay? Yeah, but that's a capital punishment there, okay? And But what is the purpose of it? Ask any capital punishment proponent, and they'll always say, oh, it's a determent. It's to deter people from committing these crimes. So they make the crime so outlandish, okay? But the problem is it isn't a deterrent, because it takes forever to fulfill the, the actual punishment for the actual crime that somebody commits. Even when somebody admits to guilt... It still takes ten years to fulfill the actual thing, so that's a drain upon our on our, our resources as far as tax, which I'm against taxes, by the way, but against the taxes that we pay. Okay, right. and, and 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 also it's a psychological drain on the victims, you know, that that have to that have to survive, you know, and and, it's, and in Islam, it's for according to Sharia, let's say. You know, uh, Steve, you killed my wife. God forbid. I hope you would never do that. But no, let's say you killed my it. wife. Go ahead. I but in, in, I'm glad to hear that. But but in Islam, actually, I have the right, not a jury. Once you're found guilty or you admit it, I have the right to choose your punishment. One could be, I am sorry, an eye for an eye. I want him. I want him executed. I cannot live with him on this earth. He has to die. That's number one punishment. Now, this is Sharia, people. Now, listen carefully. The second choice is, well, you know, my wife was young. She's, you know, 32 years old. She could have lived another 30, 40 years. You know, she would have done this for me. So she was worth X amount of dollars. So you need to pay me X amount of dollars. Oh, you don't have X amount of dollars? Well, then you're my indentured servant, and you have to work that money off for me. And the fourth one, God tells us in the Quran, He tells us your guaranteed heaven is I forgive you. And you let them go. Right. So the reward for the fourth one, which is forgiveness, the same thing that we all seek from God, regardless of what our faith is, if we are capable in something like that, showing forgiveness to somebody, mm. then, you know, then the reward is... As as an American, you know the those three options that um, you're talking about in Sharia law. Um, 
those options are interesting because the the middle one i guess gets me the hardest right you know the mm-hmm. my ability to say yeah off with his head right or right. my ability to go i forgive you i do mm-hmm. not do the eye for an eye let's get beyond that mm-hmm. but the middle one the indentured why does that one resonate the hardest with me because it well maybe it's right now because we're we've got this whole slavery thing going on oh. or and you're you're like but what's better and off with his head right or i don't know and that's kind of weird well, i mean Probably- yeah, yeah but i mean it's it, it's not meant to be slave because you're actually working for somebody because the money that 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 person that is lost you know, whether it's a son who would later on in a parent's life take care of them, can no, is no longer there. So that son cannot take care of the parents. So that son, you know, you, you know, we do it all the time with lawsuits. I mean, the thing that drives me absolutely nuts is people pitch such a fit about Islamic doctrine and, and, and Sharia law, but yet we do the same things in our society. We just don't have one simple word that we can stick upon it. But when somebody dies, you know, Look at uh, uh, O.J. Simpson. Wasn't there two trials? Wasn't there right. one where he was found not guilty? And then there was a civil one where they sued him? I mean, mm-hmm. so are we not doing the same thing here? We just don't call it under one word. But yet we do the same thing here. And okay. which is worse? The threat of cutting somebody's hand off for theft? Which, by the way, if people would finish reading the the actual law, if you would. I hate to use the word law, but that's kind of what Sharia means, but if you actually read it when as far as theft is concerned, the first thing that has to be done is this, is first, why did the person steal? If the person stole in order to feed himself or his family because he can't work, then he's not guilty. Actually, it's society that's at fault that he does not have a job and he cannot oh feed his God. family. Hey, the music's on. We'll be right back. Hang on, folks. Your money. What is it worth today? A $100 bill in 1913 is worth only $2 today. So now, your money is just about worthless, and the Fed will continue printing more and more of it. But what if you could turn it around, $1 at a time, and make your money worth more than it is now? How? By acquiring gold before your paper money is totally worthless. But how can you afford gold at today's prices? By buying it one gram at a time. And this is so important because gold is the future. For as little as $65, you can begin trading your almost worthless currency for something real. Something you can hold. Carrot bars, which keep their value, can be stored securely, and are easily accessible. Just like a savings account, but a savings account backed by your gold. Carrot Bars International, a savings account you can count on. For more information, please click on the Carrot Bars banner ad at republicbroadcasting.org. Again, that's the Carrot Bars banner ad at republicbroadcasting.org. And start saving now. Herbal Healer Spring Sale. 500 parts per million colloidal silver, all sizes. COQ10 with Hawthorne, Glucosamine Chondroitin, Sea Cucumber, Colloidal Minerals, Superfam and Super Male Plax, Colon Enhancer, our top selling liquid, Cow Mag Vitamin D, MSM Sulfur Capsules, and Elderberry Power Capsules. We also offer certificate correspondence courses in natural medicine. Free memberships and free online newsletters also available at HerbalHealer.com. Herbal Healer has been serving the natural medicine industry for 25 years. This is a company you can count on. Visit HerbalHealer.com today. HerbalHealer.com. That's HerbalHealer.com. Hi, my name is David Merlin from TakeFromCaesar.us. Income is defined in the tax code. All property is a cost, including labor, according to statute. You're deprived of the provisions of Section 83 whenever you pay an income tax on your compensation. According to Section 83, only the excess over the amount paid is gross income. The government can't so much as provide an interpretation of Section 83 of its own. Get your paradigm shift in understanding today at TakeFromCaesar.us. 
Want something different from your detox? Then you want Hemp USA's Micro Plant Powder for a full body detox. With seven formulations and eight different sizes, you will feel and see the difference. And the best part? It's only about $10 a month. Our customers love it, and we ship worldwide. Get the detox difference. Get Micro Plant Powder from HempUSA.org. Call 888-910-4367 or visit HempUSA.org. See what our powder, seeds, and oil can do for you at HempUSA.org. Okay, this is Republic of Texas Radio, RT, uh, yeah, rtradio.org. I'm joined by Issa Hoge. <laughs> Hodge. You're gonna, there you Hodge. go, Dodge. Hodge. Just keep thinking of Dodge. Hodge, <laughs> yeah. And uh, that's uh, Wake Up in America. America, <laughs> that's, America, you just, America. You, Mer? America. Okay, America. I'll, I'll get it. Well, I don't want to get it. I want America back or the Republic of I do the United States. Um, love you to change the name of your show once it's returned. It I mean, will. Right. Well, good. Hey, we were just talking about stealing food, right? You know, and a person that would steal the food, and, you know, and they, they're, they're like, well, if somebody steals, you chop off their hand. But that's not the always the case. It, you were saying shame on us if the person is stealing food, that that's a failure of, um, well, the people around the community to some extent. Yeah. Is that what you were saying? Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, uh, you know, in, in, this, in Islam, we have, uh, what's called zakat, which is charity. It's mandatory that we give 2.5% of our wealth away every single year. 2.5% of our wealth, uh, to the poor. That's specifically, uh, to be spent on the poor because not everybody uh, is guaranteed a job. Not everybody's guaranteed an education. I mean, uh, this is the trials that every human being goes through. And, 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 and all people of faith can, can understand this and agree with me on this. That, you know, not every, you know, God tests some of us with wealth and God tests some of us with poverty. And those that are in poverty is a test of those with wealth. And those that are wealthy, it's a test for those who are in poverty. So we're all tests for one another to how we're going to handle it. Do we handle it with humility? Do we do we do we take care of our our, our fellow brothers and sisters and our, our civilians? Like for example, here in America, uh, when the tornado hit in Joplin, uh, uh, Joplin, Missouri, for example, uh, there was over one point two million dollars raised within the just in Missouri, just in the state of Missouri, from Muslims within Missouri, uh, drove five semi truck full of clothes and and food and water to Joplin. And uh, uh, Muslims from all of Missouri, Kansas, and uh, everywhere went to Joplin to help people dig through their rubble, okay, to find their personal effects, find their pets, you know, uh, help them dish out water and food and clothes for people, all right? Uh, same thing with, uh, with with Sandy. Same thing with Katrina. I mean, every catastrophe that happens right now, uh, the churches that are being burnt down, uh, you know, all over the south, it's it's Muslims who have raised uh, close to a million dollars to help rebuild the churches. Okay, mm-hmm. this stuff does not hit mainstream media because they want you to believe this guy in, Ch- uh, in Chattanooga is the face of Islam. That that this is what we as Muslims, all 1.7 billion of us, this is a very simple mathematical equation that people can use to determine the validity of this statement. Okay, and here's the mathematical equation. If it was the edict within the Quran for every Muslim to hate everybody and convert or kill everybody, even if only 10% of us adhere to that, okay, which if you listen to people like Fox News and they have that Stephen Emerson on there, or they have uh, uh, Bridget Gabriel or some of these, or uh, Robert Spencer, some of these supposed uh, terrorist Islamic specialists, and I'm doing my, my quotation bunny ears, people, if you can't see me. Okay. Uh, I'm doing the quote unquote thing. Oh God, we've got music. That's a quick, that was yeah. a quick break. My goodness. Uh, I know. This is the strange station clock. Hey, hang on. Let's go to the other side of the hour and let's continue this. I want to know this equation. With 
financial uncertainty circling the globe due to job losses, decline in the housing market, a climate of corruption, bailouts, currency rigging, and unfair competition, many are once more turning to precious metals as the only hedge against the uncertainty of the future. With the U.S. House conducting hearings on proposals to confiscate workers' personal retirement accounts, including 401ks and IRAs, this is the time to secure your assets. Call Republic Trading Group today, 800-691-7898, before this happens, and find out how easy it is to convert your existing IRA and, in some instances, your 401k plan into real wealth now. Don't let the ravages of hyperinflation caused by the massive increase of fiat currency now flooding world markets affect your retirement account. Call RTG at 800-691-7898 and experience the security and peace of mind that only real gold and silver can offer. That number again is 800-691-7898. Call now. You're listening to the Republic Broadcasting Network because you can handle the truth. Okay, well, welcome to the second hour. You're listening to...